Hey guys, Chris from DataVids. We're going to talk about caching. You already know what caching is or you wouldn't be, probably be watching this video. So let me tell you real specifically, we'll get right into the code. This is going to be about caching for ASP.NET Core on MVC applications. It's going to use dependency injection. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I've got another video, but you don't need to really watch that right now. It's going to become pretty obvious once we get right into this. And I'm going to show you in Visual Studio right now. Um, it's going to use iMemory Cache Interface. And well, let's get started. Let me know what you think. All right, so open up Visual Studio, go File New Project, and you're going to search for ASP.NET MVC, and we'll get right into it. This won't take too long. ASP.NET Core Web Application. Next, call it something. All right, let's leave these uh, defaults here. This is good enough for now. It's going to be on model view controller. All right. So let's leave our default controller here, but we'll give it a method that takes a long time, right? So that we have something to cache. All right. So go right over to your index controller. And we're going to just do some tasks that takes a while. So take long time. Generate that method. Quick actions refactoring. Generate method take long time. And this one's going to do not a whole lot of anything. We'll do a thread.sleep here for 1500 milliseconds. And um, now let's go ahead and set a view bag. Uh, result equals I am finished waiting for IO. Results here. So, you know, it could be a SQL query or lots of other different types of IO happening there. And uh, let's go ahead and go over to the view and we're going to go to the index view. And let's go ahead and add a paragraph. And we will do HTML helper raw. I believe you want to normally clean that up a bit, but this is just for the purpose of showing you guys what you came here for. Uh, we call that result to make it capitalized, like a real property. All right, so I'm going to hit F5. One, two, three, four. All right, it's about four seconds, right? Not too bad. All right, so now we know we want to implement our caching. Turn that four seconds into instant. So let's go over to startup, and we'll go down to our services to take care of that dependency injection. All right. So if this was a custom dependency injection that you are doing, then over here under configure services, you would have services dot add, uh, add transient and you would specify your interface and you'd specify your service that consumes that interface, right? But what we're doing here with the iMemory cache is we're actually using a dependency injection um, for a service that's already provided to us by .NET Core MVC framework. So it's going to be super easy. All right. So go back to your controller and you can skip the startup step. All right. So go to the top and we're going to go ahead and add our cache. So I'm going to do uh, private i memory cache cache. Call it anything you want. Uh, all right. And now in our dependency injection, to I mean to inject it, we have to specify it in our um, constructor here. So let's just add another one of these. We'll call it i memory cache. Uh, memory cache sounds good to me. And let's assign our local variable. And now it's time to use it. All right. So down here in our index method, um, instead of doing take long time here, um, I'm going to move the uh, string result into that. So let's do string uh, result equals take long time. And let's return this. 
just to make it a little bit more realistic, make that a string, and we will return that string. And we'll make that equal to result. All right. Now, time for the magic. Let's define our cache entry. So, let's say string cache entry. And we want to see if that cache entry already exists. If it does, we're going to return it. Otherwise, we're going to get it. And we'll get it using take long time. So, here we go. Semicolon there. And we'll say if the cache dot try get value. And here's where we, we need a key, a unique key that specifies the data that you want to get out. Now in the examples in the official Microsoft documentation, they have a static class that lists all these different keys. If you have a large application, lots of different things you're going to cache, um, then you'll want to do that. If not, you might want to just put one in there. I'm not recommending that you hard code anything. You want to put it at the top the top of your class or out in a you know an external manager of strings of some sort or a resource file but for the purpose of this I'm going to stick it right in here we're going to call it my unique key all right and then you got your out reference and your cache entry all right so if we did not find it then we are going to compute it. And that's this right here. So we'll move that right in here. And I believe we said cache entry. And um, then we need to set the cache now that we really have run it. So the next time we don't go in here. So um, uh, we'll go with the exact code from the documentation for this particular piece, the cache options. It's going to be new memory cache entry options. And now here, here we're going to specify in the options for the caching how long we want to cache it for. Um, and if you choose time span, it gives you lots of choices here. You can define it seconds, minutes, hours, days. Um, so in our case, let's go ahead and do, um, I guess, uh, five minutes. Good enough for our example. And let's go ahead and then save that cache. Now that we've set the options, so we'll do cache.set and the cache keys, uh, which we've defined as my unique key. in our cache entry, and then the options that we just specified. And that should do it. Um, our result here, we now have placed into cache entry. All right, so what I expect to see now is the first time we run it, it's going to take 1500 milliseconds. And the second time we run it, it's going to not go in here and it's going to take a split second. So let's try it. One, two, three. Okay. Now, this part's a little bit tricky because we're already, if I stop this, I might stop my local debugging instance. So I'm going to start a second instance. Debug start new instance very cool now before you run away I want to show you this one last thing super quick I'm gonna set a breakpoint here I've stopped it set a breakpoint right there I'm hit F5 and you'll notice I will land right on it I'm gonna hit F10 boom I'm going inside it I'm taking a long time setting it up I'm gonna hit F5 to finish shows up on the screen right Go ahead and right click, debug, start new instance, the sec a second thread, and I'm back on that if statement, hit F10. I jumped right over it because it found that unique key. And if I hover over cache entry, as you can see, it did get that data out of the cache. So it's kind of a 
pretty great feature. The, in, uh, the iMemory cache, fantastic. All right, well, that was an easy one, right? Have a great day. Hope it comes useful for you.